right, welcome to 1.2 part 2 where we're talking about stretches of functions. Um, it's from the same section as we talked about yesterday where we were talking about reflections in the x and y axis. So that's page 16 to 31. Again, our curriculum outcome is uh, 30.7 where we are understanding transformations that include functions given in equation or graph form, including horizontal and vertical translations and horizontal and vertical stretches, which is what we're talking about today, the horizontal and vertical stretches. Our objectives for this lesson, there's only two of them. The first one is to be able to recognize when a vertical or horizontal stretch has taken place by looking at a graph of a function, or I guess of two functions. And our second one is to know how the equation of a function changes if a vertical and or a horizontal stretch has occurred. And once again, we are gonna head over to GeoGebra and uh, look at some functions. All right, here we are in GeoGebra again. And what we're doing is taking a look at a vertical stretch. So first off, I have uh, graphed uh, f of x equals x squared. This is our basic, um, our basic parabola, just a plain old x squared graph. And note, I've tried to draw attention to four main points on this parabola. Um, this point, which is 1, 1, uh, this point, which is 2, comma 4, this point, which is negative 1, comma 1, and this point, which is negative 2, comma 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens when we um, introduce a number in front of the x squared. So up here, I'm going to show you the graph of 2x squared, which is going to now be in red. Now, maybe you remember this from last year, but it appears that the graph of 2x squared has uh, gotten skinnier. So let's take a look at the point directly above A. So it still has an X value of one, but now its Y value is two. Likewise, on the other side, the point directly above point B still has an X value of negative one, but now its height is positive two. I have to zoom out a bit to find these other two points. And here we go, point G. So where point D had a X value of negative two and a Y value of four, now it has an X value of negative two, but a Y value of eight. And point H, a X value of two and a Y value of eight. So it appears that when we multiplied the function by two, all that happened is that each um, Y value for every one of our points also doubled. So it went from 1 to 2, it went from 4 to 8. Went from 1 to 2, and it went from 4 all the way up to 8. So that is a vertical stretch. This graph is being stretched upwards. All right, so if I hide that red function, so we don't get too confused, what happens if the number that I put in front of our x squared happens to be a fraction? So I have put in the graph of 0 0.5, which is a half, x squared. So let's take a look, see, at these points. So our point B, let's try and zoom in here. There we go. Our point B was at a height of one, and now it appears to be on a height of 0 0.5. Point A had a height of one, now it has a height of 0 0.5. Point C had a height of 4, now it has a height of 2, and point D had a height of 4, now it has a point of 2 as well, a height of 2 as well, sorry. So all that means is that when we multiply our function by a fraction, or a number less than 1, um, we multiply it by a half, so the height of each of these points on our blue graph were cut in half, so from 4 to 2, from 1 to a half. And so this is called a vertical stretch. Sometimes um, you might see something called a vertical compression as well, but for the most part, we just call them vertical stretches. Okay, we are now looking at a horizontal stretch. Um, and the, the function I've chosen to examine is actually a little more complicated than normal, but it shows a, a good example of a horizontal stretch. And that is the function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 17 x squared plus 16. So right away, when I clicked on that, it shows me that I need to back up. All right. So 
it looks or appears that, let's just stretch this out a bit, there we go, it appears that it's a large W. So the key thing here is that we are now going to do something a little bit differently. Um, we are going to find what f of 2x is going to be. So again, our original function is f of x, and it is x to the fourth plus, sorry, minus 17x squared plus 16. So if I find f of 2x, really all I'm doing is substituting in a 2x every place that I saw a x. So when I do that, I get 2x to the fourth power, which is 16x to the fourth power. I get 17 times 2x squared. Well, 2x squared is 4x squared. And I still have 16. So in the end, I get 16x to the fourth. 17 times 4 is 68. And this is my new function. So again, I am just finding f of 2x. So we're seeing what's going to happen if I put in a 2x into my function instead of just a normal x. So again, we've done a number of different translations and uh, stretches so far. We found out what happened if we took a function and we added a number to it. We found out what happened if we took a function and we subtracted a number from x. Um, we just found out what happened if we multiply a function by a number. And so now we're finding out what happens when we multiply that x by a number. So in this case we're talking about a 2x. So let's see. Here's my function. It is in red. And it looks like this w, the original w was in blue, and the new w, or the new x to the fourth function, is in red. It looks like it's gotten skinnier. So we normally call that a horizontal compression. Now what's key is how much it was compressed. So we're going to zoom in a bit. And the points we're going to look at are just these x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts on the blue graph, which are the original, a, b, c, and d. There we go. And so the original x-intercepts were negative 4, negative 1, 1, and 4. And our new x-intercepts, which are negative 2, negative half, positive half, and positive 2. So again, they're just listed on the left-hand side here. So it appears that when we found f of 2, f of 2x, sorry, what happened is that our graph got skinnier. So it got skinnier, and so it's now half as wide, because all of our x-intercepts have been cut in half, so it's half as wide. And that's what happened when we put in an f of 2x. So. I guess we'll see what happens and maybe you have a suggestion in your head what, of what's going to happen um, when we find out what f of half x is. So what we're going to do is change our function. So get rid of the red one. And we're going to click on our, our green function. So what happened again is now I, zoom out a bit, now I have found f of a half x. So I've taken my original function which was x to the fourth so now that's a half x to the fourth and now I have minus 17 and a half x that's squared plus 16 and when I do the math I get 1 16th x to the fourth I get 17 over 4 x squared and I get still get positive 16. So let's see what happens when we do that. And that is our blue function. Sorry, green function. So can I do that? No, I'm still writing. 
my apologies. Okay, so green function, we that is f of a half x. Taking a look at some important points again, this x-intercept was 4, it's now negative 4, now it's at negative 8. This one is at positive 4, now it's at positive 8. This x-intercept was at 1, negative 1, now it's at negative 2. And, so, and this one was at positive 1, now it's at positive 2. So it appears that when we threw a fraction inside our brackets, so when we found f of a fraction, so f of a half x, it appears that our whole graph has become twice as wide. So when it's a half, it's twice as wide. When it was f of 2x, it was half as wide. So hopefully you can see there's a pattern developing. If I were to find f of 3x and I, if I were to graph that thing, it's going to be one third as wide. And maybe if I found f of a quarter x, it's going to be four times as wide. So you can always do that. Now you have access to this fancy program, GeoGebra. You can always find out these functions, plug them in, and see what happens. Okay, in summary, we say that a vertical stretch takes place um, of a factor a when the function f of x is multiplied by a constant. So the whole function is multiplied by a constant a. So it would look like a times f of x. So this could be like a 2, a 3, or a 4. And that's what stretches it out vertically. Note, if a happens to be a fraction that's greater than 0 but less than 1, okay, so that's a fraction like a third or two thirds or five sixths or a half or whatever, then the function undergoes a vertical compression, so it kind of gets squashed. We say a horizontal stretch of a factor b takes place when x, which is inside the brackets, is multiplied by 1 over b. So again, what we just finished with, if this was a half, that means that it's being stretched out horizontally by a factor of 2. If it was a third, it'd be stretched out by a factor of 3. If it was a fifth, stretched out by a factor of 5, etc, etc, etc. Note, if b happens to be a whole number, so in front of the x, that is a whole number, then the function undergoes what we call sometimes a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over b. So if that was the number 4, then it would be 1 fourth as big. And finally, we've got our assignment. Uh, it's on pages 28 to 31, uh, just like the last assignment. So any questions that you haven't done, um, you could definitely do um, and dealing with horizontal and vertical compressions and stretches. And once again, I will see you in class tomorrow.